It is summer and that means people are getting hot and when they get hot, they're more likely to sweat. But what if you just sweat all of the time? What if you're changing your shirt in the middle of the day because you can't stop sweating under your arms or even without being nervous, you're sweating on your palms. This is a condition called hyperhidrosis and whether you sweat excessively or just normal amounts and you want to limit the amount of sweating that you have, I'm gonna share with you the most effective ways to treat sweating, whether it's normal or excess and talk about the safety of modern day antiperspirants. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm Dr. Dustin and welcome to the channel. First off, why do we sweat? Sweating is a mechanism to help us release heat from the body and not all animals sweat, but we do. So when we get hot, we perspire and that helps to transmit heat away from the body. Sweat is also a way that we lose electrolytes or other things from the body. Now, contrary to popular belief, the purpose of sweating is not solely to release toxins from the body. And this is where we start getting into some of the myths about antiperspirant use that we're going to touch on. But let's also touch on hyperhidrosis. This is just excess sweating and I see it in the clinic in a number of different areas of the body. The most common is going to be in the armpits and we call that primary axillary hyperhidrosis. But some people will sweat on the palms, that's palmar hyperhidrosis. Some people sweat off the face, the feet, the groin area, the back, the chest. Some people have it all over their body. They can lose a lot of water during the day and when you are sweating like crazy, socially it can create some challenges for you. If you're sweating through your shirts and you've got a change in the middle of the day or you're anticipating an important meeting at work or presentation at school, it can be embarrassing if you're sweating too much. So here is how I actually teach my patients to manage excess sweating. We're gonna talk about over the counter solutions first and I will touch on some of the prescription treatments that are available. Now for most of these conditions, we're talking about axillary or armpit sweating because that's the most common and that's the area where most people normally will sweat. So if you are trying to prevent excess sweating or even all sweating, from the armpits, here is the dermatologist recommendation to manage that. When you go to look over the counter for an antiperspirant, that is the class of ingredients that are going to help limit sweating. If you are buying just a deodorant, that does not in any way slow down your sweating. It essentially just masks the smell that you can develop if you're sweating a bunch. And it's important to know that it's not the sweat that can make you stinky. If you are starting to get stinky, it's because we have bacteria on our skin that is digesting and consuming the products of the sweat because it's not just water and minerals. There are proteins that come out in the sweat from the cells that actually make the sweat. And there's oils on the skin and the bacteria feed on those and the byproducts of the bacteria lead to body odor. So if you really wanna stop the sweating that feeds the bacteria in the first place, what you need to do is use an aluminum-based deodorant. And the best time to use an aluminum-based deodorant is actually at night. We wanna put these on during a time when they can actually get into the sweat glands and we're not gonna be sweating them out immediately. So my counsel to my patients is to take a shower at nighttime, clean the area thoroughly, and then to make sure that it's totally dry. Once the skin is actually dry, that is the perfect time to apply an aluminum based deodorant. Now, if you're looking over the counter, you're going to find tons of different versions of aluminum and they are all safe to use. Some are just going to work better for you than others. And I dealt with a little bit extra sweating when I was in college. And once I found my preferred antiperspirant, I have stuck with it for 20 years now. Aluminum and these aluminum compounds actually can go into the sweat gland and form a small plug that prevents sweat from escaping. They don't last forever and we're not absorbing anywhere near a significant amount of this into the body. They're just sticking in the sweat gland and preventing excess sweat from coming out. You may still sweat a little bit because you're not gonna have every single sweat gland absorb that aluminum. But when you put it on dry skin and go to sleep and you're not sweating a whole bunch, it has a chance to actually get in there and work. If you would like to reapply in the morning with an antiperspirant, a deodorant, or a combination, 
an antiperspirant deodorant product, you certainly can do that. But you'll find that when you put this practice into habit, you're gonna have less sweating throughout the day. Now the difference is if you have hyperhidrosis, you may still have significant sweating because there's so much water coming out that it just pushes that aluminum out or just breaks through in some way or another. And this is where we get into prescription-based products. When a patient comes to me for hyperhidrosis and they have failed all of the other over-the-counter antiperspirants, antiperspirant slash deodorant, the most common prescription that I'm gonna give them is a prescription strength aluminum-based antiperspirant. The one that I most commonly prescribed is called Drysol, and this is a 20% aluminum antiperspirant. I give them the same instructions that I just talked about to put it on on dry skin at nighttime. Patients will use this for five nights in a row the first week, and then they'll take two days off. Then the next week, four days in a row and three days off and then they'll use it for three days in a row and have four days off. And we continue this cycle of dropping one day per week off of that schedule until we go down to using it one time per week. And for many people, that is an excellent plan that leads to significant improvement in their sweating. One of the challenges with Drysol, this 20% aluminum antiperspirant, is that it can be irritating to the skin, so it can't always be used as much as we prescribe it for patients. And if that's the case, just use it as frequently as you can without leading to too much irritation. When we look at additional products that can help to treat sweating from a topical perspective, the next thing that we have is a product called Hubrexa. This is a topical glycopyrrolate, and I'm gonna explain what that means here in a minute, but this comes in a cloth that can be rubbed under the arms, and what it does is it stops the transmission from the nerve to the sweat gland because that nerve has to be active to tell the sweat gland to produce sweat. And if we interrupt that transmission, the signal doesn't get sent. And even if you have hyperhidrosis, you will have significantly reduced sweating because you still have to have the nerves active in order to send that signal to produce the sweat. Now, Cubrexa is a brand name medication and not many insurances have covered it very well, so it gets to be kind of expensive. And there are compounding pharmacies that will make versions of this in a topical solution or on pre-soaked pads that you can get and that you can use. Now, to touch just a bit, this is important, to touch just a bit on this nerve transmission to the sweat gland. The chemical that it sends is called acetylcholine and glycopyrrolate helps to block the release of acetylcholine from the nerve to the sweat gland. But here's the important thing is that there are other functions in the body that rely on acetylcholine in order to do their job. And one of those happens to be in your eye, the dilation of your pupil is a response due to the release of acetylcholine. And so if you are using Cubrexa, you have to wash it off of your hands after applying under the arms, because if you have that product on your hand and you rub your eye, your pupil will blow up and it will get super big like you've been to the eye doctor and had your eye dilated. And if you only have one pupil that's doing this and the other one is normal, it might look like you had a stroke. And I actually had a patient that this happened to before they came to see me and we're now doing something totally different for their sweating. But in this case, they thought they were having a stroke. Even though they felt fine, they knew that something was wrong. They went to the emergency room, had a CAT scan, a full neuro workup, and then within a few hours, the eye was back to normal and they were discharged from the hospital. And it took them a minute to realize what was actually going on, but that was due to the glycopyrrolate in the product. So that was alarming, but it is a safe product to use. For other prescription products, you can actually take glycopyrrolate in an oral form. There is a pill of glycopyrrolate and we'll use this in certain conditions like hyperhidrosis, extreme sweating. We're more likely to use this if somebody is sweating from multiple areas of their body and they can't apply an antiperspirant everywhere or they're sweating on their palms and you can't use a deodorant or an antiperspirant on the palms. So this can go in and treat it from the inside by slowing down the release of acetylcholine from the nerves. Now, yes, this can have side effects. It can cause some dry 
eye, it can cause some dry mouth. So we always try to go to the lowest effective dose of glycopyrrolate. But some patients do need a little bit higher dose. And if that's the case, we have to be very careful, especially in the hot summer months when you're not sweating. And if you're running, you're playing outside, you're hiking, you could get overheated a little bit easier. So you have to stay well hydrated, stay in the shade, protect your skin from the sun because it could have more significant side effects if you're not careful. Another medication is called oxybutynin and this also blocks the release of acetylcholine. I don't prescribe it as much in my practice, but it can be very effective and it works in a similar way to glycopyrrolate. Now, this one is mainly prescribed for people with an overactive bladder because the squeezing of the bladder to empty your urine is also a function that is dependent on on acetylcholine. So that is another problem. If somebody needs this medication and they have difficulty urinating to begin with, this could cause urinary retention. Guys, everything has the risk of a side effect and we try to go on the lowest effective dose. But it's important to be informed of the risks and the benefits because both of these oral medications I have seen significantly improve patients' quality of life when they have way too much sweating going on. Another treatment that we'll do in the clinic for excess sweating is Botox. Because Botox blocks the release of transmission of the signal that causes the nerve to tell the sweat gland to produce sweat. Now, this can be done very comfortably in the office with topical numbing in the armpits. Still gonna be a little bit more painful if we're doing it on the hands, but it can be done. The challenge is that Botox is expensive and many insurance companies won't cover this method of treatment. In my clinic, we charge about $1,200 to treat both armpits with one vial of Botox when we're doing it without insurance. So it is expensive, but the upside is that this can often last up to six months in patients. Typically, when we do Botox in the face to help relax the wrinkles, they're only getting about three months of use out of that, but it does seem to last longer in the armpits. So if you've exhausted your other options, you might want to talk to your dermatologist about Botox as a therapy, and in some cases, your insurance company might even cover that treatment. Another treatment that can be done in office or sometimes at home, there are companies making these for home use, is an iontophoresis machine. And this can be really effective for excess sweating on the palms. But essentially this uses a positive and a negative electrode. You place your hands in a small pan of water where they run in a small mild electrical current through it. And that process kind of helps block the sweat glands in the hands. And this can be highly effective, although somewhat of an uncomfortable treatment. I'm not gonna go great into detail on iontophoresis, but it is something that we could address in a future video if you're interested. Just let me know down in the comments. Lastly, I wanna to touch on a brand of products that I have no affiliation with, but I've recommended them to a number of patients that have had success. And this is a company called Carpe. Carpe makes aluminum-based antiperspirant products for all areas of the body. So wherever you have excess sweating, you can have an antiperspirant stick for under the arms. They have a lotion for the hands, for the feet, for the face that are all really engineered and designed to be more cosmetically elegant for the area that you're putting it on. And so these can be a highly effective suite of products if you have sweating in a particular area. I do recommend that you check out Carpe. I'll have a link down in the video description, but I'm not a partner with them and they're not sponsoring this video. Now I would be remiss if we didn't talk about aluminum safety because this is a big problem online where people are concerned about the long-term health effects of aluminum. But the reality is that there are no good studies that show a risk of using aluminum-based antiperspirants and increasing your risk of breast cancer, of Alzheimer's disease, or any other types of cancer or hormone disruption. This has been extensively looked at by the American Cancer Society, the National Cancer Institute, and the Alzheimer's Association. And I'm gonna put some links down to their websites down here below where you can read through in more detail. But most of the time when we have even a small association here, they're very small sample sizes and their retrospective reviews. That means they're taking people and asking them, hey, what kind of stuff did you put under your arms 20 years ago? We know when it comes to epidemiological studies that these really are difficult to get accurate data out of. And even in those that have shown a small signal, it's so small that it's not considered statistically significant. And in more high quality studies that have looked at this, they have found no association. And we we have been using these, we consume aluminum in our diet, and they are not the cause of breast cancer, other types of cancer, or Alzheimer's. And this is a common misconception. And because there's so much fear 
about aluminum. We now have companies that are marketing and broadly putting on their products aluminum free. And this feeds into a cycle where we think, oh, it's aluminum free. And they're making a point of that. Is that because aluminum is bad? Yeah, I think aluminum is bad. And it's a self-defeating cycle. I was with a company in their scientific advisory boardroom and we talked about some new deodorants that they were bringing onto the market that boldly proclaimed to be aluminum free. And I said, why are we putting that on there? Are you guys actually worried that aluminum is causing any problems in patients? And they said, no. They said it was strictly for marketing. And so I need you to understand that because aluminum is safe. And if you have excess sweating, it is gonna be the most effective way to treat it, whether it's over the counter products or if you need a prescription. They're highly effective and they're highly safe. It's important to treat your excess sweating because of the social stigma that can come along with it. But remember, when you have something like this, it doesn't determine your worth as an individual. You are still valuable valuable and you should still be able to be confident when you go out and do anything that you want to do. And I hope you understand that and it's okay to want to treat it, but don't let it devalue who you feel like you are inside. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I am passionate about providing free dermatology advice and free dermatology care. Recently, I've been out in my mobile clinic to provide free dermatology care for underserved populations. And if you'd like to see a little bit about what we do, I'll have a video right up here and another suggested video here to help find more information on improving your skin and your health. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.